Anthony, can you just revise for us quickly? Uh, because, you know, yourself, myself, Ahmed, we do this in clinic. Uh, chart you, like, uh, what are the parameters and uh, how do we do that? So I'll start by just saying, I think we underestimate the prognostic impact of li underlying liver disease. Fair. So I think medical oncologists in general need to get more used to assessing liver function and, and realizing that the CHALPU score, the degree of cirrhosis are prognostic and they impact the approach to the patient as, as Pierre said. Sure, sure. Uh, just to kind of summarize again, the CHALPU score you know, has the lab values, the albumin, the bilirubin, the INR. But so also, albumin, bilirubin, INR, uh -huh, and? And then uh, the uh, evaluating ascites and hepatic encephalopathy. And these are clinical, correct? Correct. Okay, okay. Uh, but, uh, ascites so the ascites is not on scans, it's the clinically detectable Perfect. ascites. That's very important. Yes. Good, good. Um, so actually many registries have shown yeah. that especially in medical oncology clinics only a minority of patients have a child use score noted or calculated yeah. but again I do think it's important for prognostication and, and management fair enough so so what we heard today is and this is very important is that liver cancer number one happened because of a quote-unquote risk factor something that really caused the cancer to develop and as we heard from uh, Dr. Kassib that uh, in his clinic, like some in our clinics, we'll see patients that have the hepatitis B-related HCC, hepatitis C-related HCC, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, which is a new oncomer as a risk factor, and of course, the alcoholic cirrhosis. On top of that, we heard also, and Dr. Gulam made sure that to confirm that necessity for ensuring that we look not only at the liver cancer, but also at the liver functionality. And we heard about different parameters that can be used, nonetheless, I would say, yes, the default has been child pew. Understandably, this is what have been used for a long period of time. It has certain limitations, understandably, because only the parameters that are related to the cirrhosis are within. But of course, we all know that a certain parameter related to the cancer itself can also contribute to the outcome. Nonetheless, uh, the child pew also, we like to use it. And as we heard from Dr. Kuwari, the albumin, bilirubin, PTINR, clinical ascites, clinical encephalopathy, and get out of it a certain uh, uh, number that will guide us where the patient might fall. Very important, as we continue the program, you'll notice that almost most, if not all, of the clinical trials that were done in liver cancer actually depend on the child pew scoring system. And as such, this probably, for practicality purposes, will make total sense for us in that regard. And uh, if anything, I would like to only ask one last question to Dr. Fernat in regard to the child pew. Is it like, in other words, A to B to C, like a linear thing? Like, in other words, A, then they move to B, then C? Or is it like something else, like exponential? It's, it's really fluid. And, yeah. you know, patients will, you know, be an A and can absolutely move to B. But I've also seen patients that present as a B, and now we can get them back to an A, where now we're able to sort of tune them up enough, so to speak, to be able to get them uh, to tolerate systemic therapy appropriately. And that's really through appropriate medication management, diet management, exercise, all these different things that we can do to really maintain their liver function. No, by all means, if anything, the child pew is uh, more of a number one exponential slash fluid, i.e. a patient will probably link, live a long time on A, like an like endless long straight line, and then B is like a curve and C is like a shoot. But nonetheless, it's very important to also those edges between like an A6 and B7. What we can we do to keep the patient on the A side exactly as we just heard from Dr. Fournette? Another thing that at least Catherine is kind of suggesting on, we're not gonna necessarily discuss in details, but the new onset is what the microbiome situation and contribution in regard to the NASH or how can we help the NASH to kind of, you know, improve on the situation through the microbiome that is an expanding uh, science. Admittedly, we're not there yet, but something that definitely we're watching like everybody else very carefully.